This video contains a list of the upland game birds found in North America. I will give a verbal description of each species paired with pictures and range maps. The purpose of this video is to expand your knowledge on the vast array of upland game species and perhaps get an idea of where to begin looking for the species that may be close to you. Some of these birds can be difficult to identify in the wild because there can be so much variation between males and females, even if they're within the same species, or just within the males as they change in color and display for the breeding seasons. The range maps will give you a general indication of where each species is found, but take note that they aren't perfect, so please acknowledge that information with a grain of salt. I will first go over the species of quail. The California quail is native to the west coast of the U.S., all the way down throughout Baja, California. There are some secluded populations scattered throughout the Great Basin and extending as far as eastern Utah. This bird has a forward drooping head plume in both males and females, but the plume is much larger on the males. The gambles quail are native to the deserts of the southwest of North America. They are often found gathered along brushy washes and desert streams. Males and females both have a black plume on their heads similar to the California quail. Scaled quail are found in the grasslands of the southwestern U.S. and northern Mexico. These brownish gray birds have a fluffy crest and a beautiful scale-like pattern of dark brown and gray on the breast and belly. Mountain quail are found in the west coast of the U.S. This plump bird sports a dramatic head plume like an exclamation point on its head. It is an elusive bird of the western scrub and highlands, being easy to hear but difficult to see. The species inhabits remote, mountainous areas typically covered with dense shrubs. Despite the male's extravagant patterning, the Montezuma quail is seen rarely as it is a master of hiding in the mountain grasslands and woodlands of Mexico where it is found. The Montezuma quail doesn't travel around much, moving as little as 150 feet per day. These birds travel in pairs or in small family groups, rarely forming large coveys. The northern bobwhite is found in nearly all of the southeastern U.S., as well as Mexico and the Caribbean islands. Despite their sharp population decline, it's still possible to find northern bobwhite in fields, rangelands, and open forests over much of their range. Their call is one of the easiest to learn of all the bird sounds with just two sharp whistled notes. Introduced from countries in the Middle East like Afghanistan and Saudi Arabia, the chucker is a game bird that lives in the western deserts of North America. It runs and scampers up steep barren terrain with agility and speed. This bird has dark bars on its sides and a red beak. The ruffed grouse is native to much of Canada and some of the northern states of the U.S. Seeing the secretive ruffed grouse can be quite difficult although it is very easy to hear them when they are drumming. If you find yourself in sagebrush country in the spring at dawn in western North America, you may hear a strange bubbling sound and maybe even a stranger sight. Dozens of male greater sage grouse, which puff up their chests and fan their starburst tails. They inflate bulbous yellow air sacs and thrust with their heads to produce weird pops and whistles. It is quite an extraordinary sight. Unfortunately, habitat fragmentation and developments have caused severe declines for this bird species. Gunnison sage grouse are similar to, but more rare than, their close relative, the greater sage grouse. They have the same spectacular courtship display where males gather to puff themselves up, fan their tails, and use their bizarre pouches in their chest to make loud bubbling noises. The Gunnison sage grouse is restricted to western Colorado and eastern Utah. They only number about 5,000 and are listed as federally threatened. The sharp-tailed grouse is another one of the spectacular dancing grouse species. The sharp-tailed grouse gathers at open display grounds on spring mornings. Females watch intently as males bend low to the ground, raise their pointed tails skyward, and stamp their feet so fast they become a blur, inflating purplish air sacs to make quiet cooing noises. The rest of the year, these plump birds forage in grasslands, open fields, forests, and woodlands. The dusky grouse lives in mountain forests of ponderosa, lodgepole pine, aspen, or fir trees. For nearly a century, this species was known as the blue grouse along with the similar sooty grouse. The sooty grouse 
is a large game bird of the wet mountain forests of the Pacific coast. Females are intricately camouflaged in brown and white. Males are steely gray-blue. But during courtship, they reveal orange eye cones and yellow-orange air sacs in the neck. Unlike their close relative, the dusky grouse of the Rockies, city grouse display from perches high up in the trees. Their deep, rhythmic hooting calls are loud but can be difficult to locate. The spruce grouse inhabits evergreen forests in northern North America. During displays, males have a bright red eyebrow cone. These chicken-like birds eat mostly the needles of fir, spruce, and pine. And because of this diet, it makes them unpalatable to many hunters. Spruce grouse are famous for their tameness around humans. They're sometimes known as fool hens. The gray partridge is not native to the Americas, but was introduced here in the early 1900s from Europe. Small groups, called coveys, forage together year-round and explode into a scratchy, squawking flight when disturbed even at a considerably far distance. The greater prairie chicken is another one of the fabulous display grouse where males put on a spectacular dance and call. The lesser prairie chicken is a very similar species that frequents a slightly different range than the greater prairie chicken. It was once widespread and abundant, but its numbers have crashed following heavy hunting in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The hardy rock ptarmigan nests as far north as there is land in the world. This chunky grouse wears two kinds of camouflage. It's nearly all white in the snowy winter, and then it's mottled brown in the summer. Male rock ptarmigans stay white until they have finished courting females, and then intentionally dirty their plumage to hide from predators until they have molted into a safer plumage. The white-tailed ptarmigan are small, tubby grouse, snow white in the winter and twig brown in the summer. They're famous for being virtually invisible when they stand still against the windswept rocks. They nest above the timberline in the alpine tundra of the western mountains, and they are the only birds in North America that spend their entire life cycle in these very high elevations. Their feathered feet and dense plumage enable them to walk on top of snow and even roost inside snowbanks. Similar to the other ptarmigans, this bird is a master of camouflage. The willow ptarmigan is snowy white in the winter and an intricate mix of reds and browns in the summer. This grouse of the subarctic tundra lives year-round in areas where most bird species can survive only during the summer. Ptarmigan are well suited for brutally cold winters. Perhaps because their camouflage is so good, wild ptarmigan often act tame and unafraid of people. The plain chachalaca is almost always heard before it is seen. It is a sort of long-tailed tropical chicken that lives in the treetops. These birds walk along tree branches and eat flowers, buds, fruits, and insects. They're fairly common in brushy and thorny forests along streams in the Rio Grande Valley and south into Central America. The ring-necked pheasant is not native to the Americas, but was introduced from Asia in 1880. This is one of the most beloved game birds on this list, as many people have joyous memories of hunting them and are very familiar with them. Last but definitely not least is the wild turkey, the bird that every American can likely identify. These are the biggest birds on this list and have an iconic gobble and display that is well known to almost all who hear it. Those who are familiar with turkeys know that there are several species included within the term wild turkey. However, I won't be going over all those details in this video. If you enjoy list videos like this, please make sure to check out some of my other videos, like these ones here. Also, if you would consider subscribing, that is very helpful to me as well. Thanks, and I'll see you on the next one.